Hello, Assalamualaikum. I am Dr. Asif Nawaz. Today, Bailey's and Lab said tropical infection and infestation. Shumbar kya rochna kara hai? A chapter T. Er aage edition gulo the chilo na. Twenty six edition pur jonto a tropical infection ta chilo na. Aita to twenty seventh edition er special actor shangjo jon bola jete pare. That is a tropical infection. Ekhane parasitology, some parasites, some parasite related surgical conditions. Ni aala chuna kora hoy se. Jodi e rage e dhoner chapter gulo shadhan to bhag kora thakto pathology bhi thore, pathogenesis bhi thore aala chuna kora. But ekhon itar uibha be aala chuna kora hoy na. Ekhon itar nidhisto chapter er madhu me bhi chuna kora hoy. Acha. So, पोतो में एक अन इंट्रोडक्शन जे ट्रॉपिकल इन्फेक्शंस अशुले मोस्ट सर्जिकल कंडीशन इन द ट्रॉपिक्स रीज़न इन द आर्ट दैट एसिड विद द पैरासाइटिक इन्फेस्टेशन एंड इन्फेक्शन रिलेटेड टू पोर हाइजीनिक कंडीशन दैट पिंस पैरासाइटिक इन्फेक्शन तादेरी बेशी है जरा दोस आर बिलोंग्ड फ्रॉम अ पोर Okay, for example, international travels disease are common in the tropics may present in areas of world and where they are not commonly seen, especially in emergencies. Tarmane, ekhane kisu specific disease or parasite related diseases, those are very common in some endemic areas of our country or of many other countries. Those are very much popular for their endemic diseases so the chapter will deal with the conditions of surgeons might occasionally see when working in an area where such diseases are uncommon that means uh, sometimes surgeons uh, may interpret or encounter with these kind of diseases those are uncommon in that area but may present with various symptoms like the disease of endemic areas okay or the people's endemic areas so so these are the things. So in this, for academic interest, may refer to 24 editions should they wish to learn details about parasitology. That means 24 edition er pori parasitology shompor ke jana ekta ichha poshon kollo shabai. That's why it has jong jong. Pothu me ashi MBS is that means MB MB disease. Okay. So MBS is caused by amoeba and amoeba histolytica. So this is the organism which is causes this MBBS. The disease is uncommon in Indian subcontinent. So, it is Indian subcontinent ironic beshi, but Africa and some part of the okay, Central and South America. So, Africa, Indian and South America, the shantamibic dysentery gula paa jai. So, the major remain the symptomatic, symptomatic carrier, the mode of infection is via the FICO oral route. So, ekane FICO oral route diye eta chharabe and the disease occurs as a result of substandard hygiene. So, those are occur as a result of substandard hygiene and the sanitizations before and the populations from the poor socioeconomic status are more vulnerable. So, as I say before, these the parasitic disease like amoeba, amoeba or others, those are, are easily infected those people who are, those are very much uh, not popular, so they are uh, they are living in very so low economic conditions. So maybe liver abscess is commonest. Extraintestinal manifestations occurs in less than ten percent of infected population. That means uh, the commonest of extraintestinal manifestation occurs in the less than ten percent of infected population and in the pandemic areas. It is much more common than pyogenic abscess. Hmm. So, in the endemic area, endemic area the ki hai, je tadir pyogenic abscess is not so common like the MIV abscess. So, patients who are immunocompromised and alcoholics are most susceptible to infections. So, there is another point that uh, a patient of low economic condition, not only that, but also there are many pa patients those are immunocompromised, like a uh, patient with chronic diabetes mellitus or chronic steroid induced patient or steroid related uh, treatment those are taking usually. 
So, they are uh, usually affected with this kind of uh, diseases. So, the pathogenesis was the organism enters the gut through food and water contaminated with the cyst. In the small bowel, the cyst hatch and the large number of trophozoites are released and carried to the colon where flask shaped ulcers from the submucus. So, there is another sign that there will be a flask shaped ulcer in the submucus of the colon. Okay. So, it is a colon colonic disease also we can say that. So, the organ enters the gut through the food and water contaminated cyst. In the bowel, small bowel, the cyst hatch, a large number of trophozoites are released and they carried out. The trophozoites multiply ultimately forming the cyst. They enter the portal circulation and pass to the feces as the infecting form that infect the other humans as a result of insanity occurs. So, these flux shape also first occurs in the submucus of the colon then uh, via the portal system it uh, enters into the liver and forms a uh, liver abscess okay or some trophozoites also wash out through the stool having entered the portal circular the trophozoites are filtered and trapped in the interlobular veins of the liver and they multiply portal triad uh, fo causing focal infarctions of the hepatocytes and in liquefactive necrosis as a so, there is what kind of necrosis occurs in the liver that is a liquefactive necrosis as a result of proteolytic enzyme produced by trophozoites. So, these liquefactive necrosis occurs by the trophozoites. Okay. So, the area of necrosis eventually coalesces to form the abscess cavity. So, that organism necrosis forms a abscess and the term amoebic hepatitis is used to describe microscopic pictures absence of microscopic abscess. So, there may, may be not visible abscess, but also it occurs by the microscopic abscess also. <laughs> the right lobe is involved in 80 percent of cases. So, it is another statement. So, right lobe is in, uh, usually occurs in uh, 80 percent and the left is a 10 percent and the remainder are multiples. So, on possible explanations for the more common involvement uh, of the right lobe of the liver is the blood from the superior mesenteric vein runs on the straighter course through the portal vein into the larger lobe the abscess are most common high in diaphragmatic surface of the right lobe. So, here we can also see the where the abscess occurs most commonly it is 80 percent occurs in the right per right side of the liver the right lobe and uh, the surface which is attached with the diaphragm. So, that means it occurs in the right side near the dome of the diaphragm. Hmm. That is the most common in a high ok. So, the abscess cavity like chocolate colored color odorless anchovy sauce like pass that is mixture of necrotic liver tissues and the blood. So, the the content of the abscess which is look like anchovy sauce pass which is uh, chocolate in color and it is odorless. Mm. So, uh, that consists of necrotic liver tissues and blood. Okay, now, the while the passage is sterile and unless secondarily infected. Okay. So, not always the abscess will be sterile. Sometimes it is affected by these secondary infections. So, chronic infection of the large bowel may result in a granulomatous lesion along the large bowel most commonly seen in the cecum called amoeboma. Okay. So, if that infection become chronic then the large bowel may result in the granulomatous lesions along the large bowel and most commonly seen in the cecum called amoeboma. Now, the amoebiosis so what are the uh, summary? So, we need the summaries that is anti amoeba histologically is most common pathogenic amoeba in human. The vast major carriers is uh, asymptomatic. So most of the carriers uh, or vast majority of the populations are asymptomatic and the insanity insanitary conditions of the poor personal hygiene encourage the transformations of the infections. In the small intestine, the parasites hatched into the trophozoites which invade the submucosa to produce flask shaped ulcers. Okay. So, there will be flask shaped ulcers in the submucosa of the colon. colon. So, portal circular parasite in liquefied in macrosis in the liver produce abscess and the majority of the abscess occurs in the right lobe of the liver and the mass of the course of the large bowel may indicate an amoeboma. Okay. 
So, this is a clinical feature, it is a very toxic and patient become anemic ok and tender hepatomegaly and sometimes rigidity, tender hepatomegaly and bulging intercostal spaces, skin edema and pleural effusion and basal pneumonitis can, can be occurs in the amic liver abscess. So, rarely that means the uh, rarely the patient may present the emergency due to the effect of rupture of abscess into the peritoneum though those is very uncommon of abscess uh, is mainly occurs just deep into the liver. So, there is uh, uh, rarely some patients will suffer from rupture of abscess in the peritoneum, but it is not common. Okay, now, the investig others some other like amoeboma if the chronic infections or chronic granuloma arising in the large bowel that is commonly seen in the cecum. So, there is another statement amoeboma is uh, commonly seen in the cecum of whole colon it is very much common in that places. The, it is prone to occurs in the long standing amoeba amoebic infections that has been treated intermittently with the drug without completions of a full course and situation arising with discriminate self medications particular in the resource for countries hence uh, this is uh, more often seen in the such countries. So, there is uh, this can easily be mistaken for a carcinoma yes that is another mimics it could look like uh, a malignancy if you uh, make a colonoscopy or or uh, try to understand what is the lesions and then uh, from the first look or with the first look you, you can mimic it as a uh, with the carcinoma of the large cut. So, an amoeboma should be suspected when a patient from an anemic area with a generalized ill health and pyrexia has a mass in the right iliac fossa with a history of blood stained mucoid diarrhea such a patient is highly unlikely have a carcinoma because altered bowel habit is not a feature of right sided colonic carcinoma. So, so you may you can uh, differentiate with it like how because right side that uh, in case of malignancy there is um, there is no any features of altered bowel habit because it is so much common in case of left side. So, altered bowel habit is not a feature of right side malignancy. So, if there is no lesion or uh, in the left side, but uh, still that patient complains of altered bowel habit then you must uh, exclude it uh, uh, with the amoebic liver abscess. So, amoebic, amoebic uh, amoeboma ok. So, while the RNA deficiency anemia is a classical elective presentation of a cecal carcinoma the same is present in an amoeboma because of uh, chronic malnutrition. So, patient highly likely to have a carcinoma because altered bowel habit is not a feature of right side chronic carcinoma while the RNA deficiency anemia is a classical elective presentation of a cecal carcinoma the same is present in an amoeboma because of chronic malnutrition. So, in uh, along with amoebic liver abscess or amoebic amoebiasis uh, along with amoebiasis a person may suffer from iron deficiency anemia because um, because cecal carcinoma may be associated with uh, amoebic liver abscess. So, mainly amoeboma is the cause of chronic malnutrition malnutrition. So, what is what are the investigations you may per, uh, you may choose for detection that is C reactive protein there is a erythro erythro sedimentations and iron deficiency anemia occurs. So, ESR will be raised C reactive protein and hypoalbuminemia and the deranged liver function. So, liver is affected grossly. So, liver function is uh, is altered sometimes and the particularly elevated alkaline phosphatase. We all know that alkaline phosphatase is a key to understand there is any obstructive jaundice or there is any jaundice or jaundice related issues. Serological tests are more specific with the majority of patients showing antibodies in the serum this can be detected by test for complement fixations in direct hemagglutinin uh, hemagglutinations and I T I I H uh, indirect immunofluorescence and enzyme linked immunosorbent assay. <coughs> so, there are some serological tests like indirect hemagglutination indirect immunofluorescence and enzyme linked immunosorbent assay ELISA. So, this can be also done serologically. Hmm. So, this test is extremely used uh, detecting acute infections and non-endemic areas. 
So, they are very much common or commonly practiced in the non endemic areas. <coughs> so, indirect immunofluorescence test jeta indirect immunoglutination hemagglutinations indirect hemagglutinations has, has a very high sensitivity in the acute amoebic liver abscess. So, the persistence of uh, antibodies in the large majority of the populations in endemic areas pre precludes its use at diagnostic investigations in those locations. In this case, tests such as counter immunoelectrophoresis is the most useful detecting the acute infections. So, there is another thing that is tests such as counter immuno immunoelectrophoresis is more useful detection of the acute infections. Now, the flexible sigmoidoscopy is a routine in the patient of blood stain altered bowel habit. If there is any history of altered bowel habit, so you may <coughs> suggest uh, sigmoidoscopy. Okay, there is a uh, very abdominal problems uh, today, so uh, I hope you must ignore the uh, the sounds uh, of that I am I am making. I'm very sorry for that. So, most amoebic ulcers occurs in the rectosigmoid and are therefore within the reach of sigmoidoscope. So, sometimes some amoebic liver abscess occurs in the rectosigmoid area. So, rectosigmoid area which is uh, also a common place of malignancy. Okay. So, you must not mimic you must uh, diagnose according to the procedures. So, you, you must be very confirmed before any surgical procedures or any medications regarding the disease. So, there will be a shallow skip lesion, flask shaped or collar strut undermined ulcer may be seen. So, collar strut undermining ulcer also seen in the tuberculosis, but here also there is a flux shape ulcers and there is a collar strut undermined ulcer may be seen. It is flux shape, it is look like the collar strut abscess and it can be biopsied and the scrapping can be taken along the mucus for immediate microscopic examinations. The Presence of trophozoa distinguishes the conditions from ulcerative colitis. So, the it is look like sometimes ulcerative colitis. So, there is a two disease malignancies ulcerative colitis you must exclude uh, with each other. So, and the other allowing imaging techniques imaging as it is a abscess. So, there is a must be uh, air fluid line or there is any cavitations and wall thickening and so we can uh, identify the hollow structures or the uh, luminous fluid field sac or cis like structures through the ultrasound. So, let us see here the, there is a huge lesion huge here the cavity. Uh, now, here you can see the CT scan you can see also uh, there is a full cavity here that is uh, also uh, any cystic fluid or any malignancy also. So, the investigation is very very accurate used in aspiration. So, we can perform ultrasound guided aspirations. I already done two patients during ultrasonography. So, where there is a doubt about diagnosis term computed tomography that means CT scan may be helpful. Okay. So, diagnostic aspiration is limited value except the establishing typical color of the aspirate. So, this is sterile colorless unless it is secondarily infected. It is also you can see this in the histolytica as well, but if you, you, you will not find any other bacteria, if that is so, then that cyst or that abscess is affected by the secondary infections. So, colonoscopy and the biopsy is a mandatory because the radiological and macroscopic appearance may be distinguishable from a concinoma. So, in doubtful cases, vigorous medical treatment is given, the patient undergoes colonoscopy again 3 to 4 weeks. Uh, the non completely full medication achha, and the colonic carcinoma must be excluded forthwith. So, it is uh, mostly know that you must know that colonic carcinoma must be excluded first because it is look like the same. We must not ma mimic about the conditions that either it is a malignancy or not. This is because dormant uh, colonic carcinoma may become apparent as a result of infestations with amoebic dysentery causing travelers diarrhea. So, amoebic, amoebic dysentery uh, may be caused by travelers diarrhea or also. So, however, it must be borne in mind that amoeba and carcinoma can coexist. So, it can be present simultaneously or together they can be affected with one another. Okay. So, a patient with have sickle carcinoma or, or colonic carcinoma and he also suffering from uh, amoebiasis. So, it, it can be 
in the same times. It can be affected with the same times because uh, they may be coexist. Hmm? So now the diagnostic pointers: the bloody mucoid diarrhea present in the endemic areas, upper abdominal pain, fever, cough, and malaise. Sickle cancer must be excluded by the colonoscopy and biopsy. So. The sigmoidoscopy shows typical ulcers and uh, biopsies, scraps may be diagnostic. Serological tests are highly sensitive and specific outside the endemic areas, ultrasound and CT scans are the imaging methods of choice. Medical treatment is very effective, should be the first choice of elective situations. With surgery be reserved for complication, metronidazole and tinidazole also are their um, are effective drugs. After treatment of metronidazole and tinidazole. 10 days of destroying intestinal amoeba. That means, uh, at least 10 days of acute uh, treatment must be undergone through this. Okay. So, uh, 10 days of destroy the intestinal amoeba. So, aspiration of carried out Im imminent rupture of an abscess is expected. So, if you think that uh, abscess uh, might be ruptured, might may be ruptured in a few days or it is in final conditions. So, you, you can aspirate through ultrasound guide, guided or CT guided aspiration can be done accordingly to prevent the rupture. Okay. So, aspiration may also help the penetration of metodizens also reduces the mor morbidity when carried out with the drug treatment in a patient with large abscess. If there is evidence of secondary infections, appropriate drug treatment is added. The threshold for aspiring, aspirating the abscess in the left lobe should be lower because of its proximity of the uh, pericardium. So, there is another statement. So, if uh, an abscess occurs in the lip lobe, so there might be uh, adhered or there may be so much close related to the heart. So, during aspiration, we must be very cautious that we must not uh, puncture or make any, um, make any injury to the heart. We must not that. So, uh, it must be very important. So, surgical treatment should be revealed at the complications of rupture if there is an rupture surgery is uh, imminent or uh, important. So, peritoneal pericardial cavities, desiccation, drainage and lavage vigorous medical treatment are the key principles but in case of large bile severe hemorrhage and toxic medical and rare complications. So, surgery is followed by dissection of the bile with exteriorizations then the patient is given vigorous support tip therapy. Okay. So, treatment what is surgical treatment is of complications such as rupture into the pleura peritoneal pericardial cavity. So, if there is any sign of rupture of the abscess, so in that case surgery is needed, but on the other hand conservative therapy is uh, is good or the principal key of treatment. <coughs> so, if the amoeboma has not regressed after full medical treatment that should be managed with colonic resections. If the amoeba is very large or is uh, untreatable or it is not completely treated with the medical treatment. So, we, we, we some in that case we can perform surgery as a, re, a resection anastomosis or the colonic resective resection surgery uh, because we must not make the infections or parasite disseminated to the uh, parietal uh, pericardial or pleural field. So, uh, we, we must prevent this by resection of the colonic segments. <coughs> so, here they develop the lar larva reach the alveoli are coughed up solid and continue their maturation in the small intestine. Sometimes the young worm migrate from trichomungal tree to oesophagus thus finding their way to gastrointestinal stack. From there they can migrate to common bile duct and pancreatic duct and if mature female once the in the small well produce amenable eggs and fertilize therefore, ex uh, excreted in the stool to perpetuate the life cycle life in the bile tract and make can form nidus of a stone. There is another things the if any uh, cakes of the egg of the antamoeba that it can form a stone in the bile duct. So, nidus means uh, there is a stimulus of stone formation in the bile duct. So, worms like that migrate in the common bile duct can produce ascending cholangitis. So, sometimes this Organism can form ascending cholangitis and obstructive gland. While the features acute pancreatitis may be caused by worm in the pancreatic duct. So there is uh, there is other worms associated with the amoeba. Okay. 
So, particularly adult worms are so much responsible or culprit for termina terminal ileum obstructions. Okay, it is in surgical emergency because the patient will uh, present with intestinal obstruction or these features of intestinal obstructions. Okay, so these are the so. So I may mistake. It is a ascariasis, okay, but because already amoeba is completed, but ascaris lumbricoids that means round worm, which is another parasite, is which which is very much common in our country as well as in a poor social country like India, like Nepal, like Sri Lanka, Maldives, and others, and also some African countries like Sudan, like uh, the uh, <coughs> Ethiopia's and others. So they are commonly associated with the ascariasis or ascaris lumbricoids which is a round worm which is a pulmonary symptoms of larva and intestinal symptoms as an adult worm. So, they are larva state in the uh, pulmonary system and the when they coughed up the as I, I said that organism may uh, go into the uh, intestine and forms an adult worm and then it um, lay eggs there. So, sometimes the adult worm becomes uh, make a bolus and form a um, they form uh, or they obstruct the terminal ileum and forms the intestinal obstruction like features and uh, uh, that go up 45 centimeter long it is so much longer and be high on the list of possible diagnosis. Beg your pardon as this most parasitic infestation and increase in the eosine like investigation what are the investigation we can perform like increase in the eosinophil count in the common eosinophil count on a basic power stool examination may show ova that means egg so stool ex stool may contaminated or stool may be found in the stool a lot of ova may be found in the stool so sputum and bronchoscopic washing may show charcoal laden crystal or larva so here is another statement that means in case of ascariasis, there is a star coats laid in crystal or the larva. Chest radiograph may show fluffy exudates in the low flux syndrome. A barium meal and the follow through may show a bolus of worms in the ileum and the lying free within the small bowel. So, ultrasound may show a worm in the common bile duct and the pancreatic duct or on magnetic resonance cholangiography, MRCP and adult worm may be seen in the common bile duct and patient presenting with features of obstructive genesis. So, we may identify the adult worm that goes into the bile duct in that case we may have perform MRCP or the ERCP to identify where the adult worm uh, present in into the bile duct. In, the, in that case ultrasound uh, may show a worm in the common bile duct. So, ultrasound sometimes in case of ultrasound we, we can found on the other hand if it is doubtful in that case we can perform CT, we can perform uh, ERCP or MRCP to identify and because we must identify or we must diagnose why the jaundice occurs as is there any uh, stone or is there any malignancies or is there any worms. Okay. So, here you can in the in case of contrast x-ray you can see the, the round worm present here the barium seen inside the round worm okay so, uh, in the round worm present in the it is MRCB film okay uh, so in the MRCB film you can see there is a round worm in the CBD okay so as in case of ascaris this is the commonest intestinal nematodes so this is a nematode series typically found in the humid atmosphere poor sanitary conditions and this in the tropical source resource poor country so, larva causes pulmonary symptoms, adult worms cause gastrointestinal, biliary and pancreatic symptoms and the bolus worms ascending cholangitis. So, these organisms can form cholangitis in the bile duct and, and after uh, a repeated infections it occurs as a obstructive jaundice from intestine in the common bile duct. And acute pancreatitis occurs when the worm is lost into the pancreatic duct and perforation of the small bile is rare. So, there is a very rare condition of perforation. So, it mainly occurs in intestine, lungs and the biliary channels. Okay. 
sometimes ascaries, ascariasis can obstruct the uh, appendicular base or appendicular lumen and forms appendicitis because it is one of the common organisms which can uh, cause acute appendicitis. So, what is the treatment? So, pulmonary phase of uh, is a self limiting there is no need of treatment and requires symptomatic patients treatment only. So, it is always necessary for any treatment those who are symptomatic. For intestinal disease patients who are under the care of physicians to treat anti helminthic drugs. So, if there is an intestinal manifestation so anti, anti helminthic drug is a drug of choice and the rapid death of a worm and if there is many worms in the terminal that are treatment may occur per precipitate acute intestinal obstruction from a bolus of dead worms. So, when a lot of uh, worm become dead and make a bolus and they will uh, obstruct the terminal ileum and form intestinal obstructions. Children who present with features of intermittent subagular obstructions should be given a trial of conservative management in the form of intravenous fluid, nasogastric suctions, hypertonic salines and enema etcetera. Okay. So, these can, can be occurs here. <coughs> Surgery is preserved for complications such as intestinal obstruction has not involved in the conservative regime when perfectly suspected. And laparotomy and the bolus of worm in the dynamite is milk through the elliptical valve in the colon natural process of stool. Okay, these are the conservative manifestations. And now the post operative hypertonic cellulinemas may be helped. So, when the patient operation operated upon emergency for a suspected complication of roundworm, an actual diagnosis is operations may turn out to be acute appendicitis, typhoid perforations or a tubercular strictures and the presence of roundworms in the incidental findings such a patient requires the appropriate surgery depending upon the primary pathology. So, here if there is a uh, other condition associated with worm like acute appendicitis, typhoid perforations and tubercular strictures and the presence of worms in the incidental findings such patients require appropriate surgery depending upon the primary pathology. So, Shudumatro timid jono ba ascariasis er jono operation er kono dorkar nai. If judi ekta ekta onek a lot of worm judi mara jai ebong shegulo judi ekta block kore and forms a acute intestinal obstruction in that case associated with other illness like acute appendicitis like typhoid perforations like um, like tubercular strictures in that case we may encounter additionally with the worm but for worm only we do not perform any surgery, but common bile duct or pancreatic duct obstruction for round worm can be treated endoscopic removal. That means, endoscopically we can uh, we can remove any worm that entered into the bile duct. So, cholecystectomy is also carried out a full course of anti parasitic treatment must follow and surgical interventions. Okay. Sometimes cholecystectomy must be done to um, to reduce the incidence or uh, or chronicity. So, ascaris diagnosis barrier meal follow through will show the scattered small bowel ultrasound may show worm in the common bile duct, pancreatic duct, pepin, abdominal radiograph and contrast CT scan will show the worms as a tubular or curvilinear structures. Conservative management and is first line of treatment, surgery is the last reason various options are available. Okay. So, enterotomy is as Asiatic cholangiohepatitis that means cholangitis in Asiatic people because it is done by a, a organism is called clonarchis sinensis which is a uh, the infestation of the organism that infest in the bile duct or, hep or hepatobiliary system. <laughs> it has a high incidence of tropical regions of Southeast Asia particularly almost those living in the major seaports near the liver estuaries. The organism which is a type of liver flux reside in snails and the fish that act as intermediate host. Ingestions of infected fish and snails. So, those people who eat uh, infected fish and snails okay, uh, and the and can affect with these cholangitis, cholangitis or cholangiohepatitis. So, pathological pathology is in human the parasites mature in the adult worms, the hepatic bile ducts are dilated and the epithelial hyperplasia and the periodical fibrosis and they may lead to dysplasia and the cholangiocarcinoma. Sometimes um, these cholangiocarcinoma sinuses may form primary and this um, cholangio 
cholangitis, primary cholangitis and in that case uh, then hyperplasia occurs and as a result cholangiocarcinoma can be occurs ok. That is a very serious complications and uh, dreaded complications of parasitic infections. So, the egg and the dead worms may uh, form an iris of stone. So, the eggs and the dead worms may form an iris of stone it can helps in stone formation in the bile duct and also stone formation in the gallbladder and common bile duct also. So, uh, due to obstructions uh, the dilated intrahepatic bile duct may lead to cholangitis and the liver abscess and hepatitis. So, here you can see some pictures of worm oh my god there is a lot of worms uh, and uh, inter to be done. So, uh, intestine may be um, perforated or incision given the intestine and a lot of worms can be um, come out. So, it is very uncommon. So, in advanced cases liver function test abnormal conformation condition exams is stool. So, here you can examine the stool and urinal spirits which may show uh, eggs on adult worm. I uniform dilatations of small peripheral intrahepatic bile duct only uh, with minimal dilatations of small and common hepatic and the common bile duct. So, there may be minimal dilatations or may dilate the structures and the endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography will confirm this finding. So, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography can, can, can occur to confirm the diagnostic. So, Asiatic cholangiopancreatitis pathogenesis occurs in the causative pathogenesis cholangiopancreatitis sinensis produces bile duct hyperplasia into hepatic tract dilatations and stones increase the risk of cholangiocarcinoma uh, and may remain dormant for many years when active there uh, are biliary tract symptoms is uh, in a generally annual patients. So, stool examination for eggs and worms is diagnostic ultrasound scan of the hepatobiliary system and ERCP are diagnostic. So, these are the things you must remember of any MCQ exam. So, this is very important this is very there are many statements those are very much needed to remember because uh, the exams are far more uh, interesting places from here. So, they take questions from the summary boxes. And the prosequential appendages is choice, cholecystic exploration, common bile duct perform indications because uh, same as uh, same as any obstructive jaundice treatment. Now the third, now the next thing is filariasis. That means elephantiasis. It is also called the elephantiasis. So filariasis is mainly caused by parasite, which area bankrofty. So, which area bankrofty is the organism which is carried by mosquito variant of parasite called uh, Brugia malari, Brugia malai and the Brugia timuri are responsible for causing disease in the 10 percent of those infected. So, there are another uh, variant parasites like uh, Brugia malai and the Brugia timuri also responsible for the disease in the about 10 percent of the infected. So, the conditions affect more than 120 millions of people worldwide. So, two third of one in India, China, Indonesia. So, these are very important after leprosy, filariasis is the most common long term disability. So, filariasis can cause long term disability. Once the host has been bitten, mosquito, the mature eggs enter the human circulations to hatch and grow into adult worms. The process of maturation takes almost a year, ok. The process maturation most almost a year and the adult worm mainly colonize the lymphatic system. So, it will block the lymphatic system and ultimately edema and elephantiasis occurs. It is mainly males who are affected because females generally cover the greater part of the bodies clothing thus making the lace prone to mosquito bites. So, in the acute presentations episodic attack of fever and the lymphadenitis and the lymphangitis. Occasionally adult worms may feel subcutaneously chronic manifestations appears acute attack. So, the adult worms cause lymphatic obstruction resulting in massive low limb edema. So, it is important things if the adult worm obstruct the lymphatic system it will obstruct the lymphatic drainage and form the distal part become swell and become edematous and obstruction cutaneous skin thickening for the orange because uh, this term is also seen in the liver malignancy uh, uh, like breast carcinoma 
ok. There is some skin changes of breast carcinoma, it is also in the podi arrange that means uh, uh, or a outer surface of the orange like skin uh, shape and size occurs in the uh, edema or the where there is any uh, lymphatic obstruction. So, there the podi orange can be seen. So, there is streptococcal infections and lymphangitis of causes fibrosis and limb channel. So, there will be repeated infections cholangitis and ultimately fibrosis occurs. So, bilateral lower limb phyllosis is often uh, with a scrotal and phenyl elephantiasis. Sometimes these two limb also uh, affect uh, also involved in the scrotum and penile part. In that case it is called the elephantiasis. So, chyluria that means uh, limb present in the urine and chylus ascites may occur. A mild form of the disease can affect the respiratory tract causing the dry cough and they are referred to as a tropical pulmonary eosinophilia. Eosinophilia is a common and nocturnal peripheral smear may show. So, here you can see this is uh, lower limb uh, lymphatic obstructions due to with the adult worm and from the edema and uh, there is a uh, uh, elephantiasis and here the scrotal involvement along the penile part and forms a uh, filariasis of scrotum. So, uh, so it is a, you can see this kind of disease also in the tropical disease like uh, Professor Ahmed Muhammad Ahmed Hassan Fahal, he is from the Sudan. Okay, he, he, he sent these pictures in the textbook uh, because these are very you know, typical things. The parasite may also be seen in the chylus urine, ascites hydrocyl fluid. The treatment is diethyl carbamazepine is very effective. And in the early stage of limb soiling, intermittent pneumatic compression of help. So, you we may compress the soil area and the treatment has no to be repeated over the prolonged period it must not be done for a long period that is uh, pneumatic compressions and the hydrocyl is treated by usual operation excisions and uh, eversion of the sac that is the large operations. If necessary the excisions are redundant skin operation of reducing the size of limbs are handed overdone these days because the procedures are so rarely successful. So, now, by doing this surgery you, you, you must you are not so much uh, free from the diseases ok. So, phyllosis because the ocular bankruptcy which is carried by the mosquito, eosinophilia occurs, lymphangitis may, aff, uh, may affect it result in the gross limb swelling you know that. And the uh, early cases are very amenable to the medical treatment, the valuable value of various surgical processes is largely unproven and the hence they are rarely performed ok. So, uh, as the uh, it is not done. So, hydratid disease. So, another disease that is a hydratid disease. So, you can see the hydratid disease here. So, the next part is uh, uh, hydratid disease which is caused by echinococcus granulosus commonly in the dog tapeworm. It is also called the dog tapeworm. So, globally distributed most common in the tropics in less common in other countries like UK. Uh, the dog is definitive host in the commonest source of infection transmitted to the intermediate host like humans, sheep and cattle. In the dog the adult worm reaches the small intestine the eggs are passed in the feces these eggs are highly resistant to extreme temperatures that means you must you cannot uh, destroy uh, egg because it is very much uh, heat sensitive heat resistant sorry heat resistant. So, these eggs can be viable for a long time in the environment. In the dog's intestine the cyst wall is digested allowing the proscolics to develop into the adult worms. The close contact and infected dogs cause contaminations of the ovicular load. So, the cyst is characterized by the three layers pericyst, ectocyst and endocyst. Pericyst develop from the compressed host organ tissue and the intermediate hyaline process which is non-infective and the inner endocyst which is germinal membrane contains vi uh, viable parasites which can spread forming a daughter cyst. So, what is the most pathognomic part of the hydrogen cyst that is a daughter cyst ok. Daughter cyst uh, lies in the endocyst ok. The variant of disease occurs in the colder climate uh, caused by echinococcus multiloculitis. That means, echinococcus granulus is very common in the uh, hot climate area like Asia the Asiatic country, but in case of cold weather or cold related countries there is another form or another species of organism that is multi 
a kind of occurs mildly local area that is occurs in the colder climate ok. Spread from the outside invasion and then expansion. So, classifications group 1 active group uh, sea sludge and then 2 centimeter often fertile. Transient group that is is starting degenerate and transitional stage inactive group are degenerated parti partially and totally calcified cyst. So, as the parasite can colonize virtually every organ in the body, the delivery is organ most often affected the lung is the next most common the parasite can affect any organs. So, lungs is the next first is the liver the second infected uh, organ can be lung and the disease may be asymptomatic discovered coincidentally and post mortem when the an ultrasound CT scan is done for some other reasons conditions. So, cyst may communicate with the biliary tree and the daughter cyst may communicate with the biliary tree uh, causing obstruction obstructive jaundice and all the usual clinical features associated with the additional symptoms activity in the parasitic infestation features of raised intracranial pressure. So, sometimes that cyst can uh, be gone through the intestine by the biliary system and also can be affect the brain and increase the raised intracranial pressure. So, you can see there are multiple uh, uh, loculi or multiple cysts present in the huge cyst. Uh, here you can see also the cyst and in the in case of other organ like liver you can see multiple cyst present in the liver here here here. So, these are the cyst uh, or daughter cyst present here there. So, uh, in the MRCP film you can see some the dilatation of the bile duct and uh, you can see a cyst which is contains uh, of another multiple numerous cyst and some are long uh, bigger and smaller than multiple. So, this is also a, a typical features of hydrated cyst ok. So, the patients may present the emergency with the severe abdominal pain following the minor trauma and the series can diagnostic really patient the may emergency with the feature of anaphylactic shock. So, may patient uh, present with anaphylactic shock, a uh, patient may subsequently cough up in the white materials that contains colics. So, colics is the culprit which present in the daughter cyst, may doubled in the trichobronchial tree and rupture of the hepatic that is in the film surface of the liver ok. So, there should be high index suspicion ELISA, electrophoresis, ultrasound and CT scan may be con uh, investigation of choice. So, ultrasound of biliary tree may show abnormality in the gallbladder and bile duct and hydrity manifestations. So, in case of hydrity elective clinical presentation is a form of painful lump arising in the liver and of electric rupture of the hydrity. It is very important because this fluid or a hydritic fluid is very much anaphylactic because uh, and, and in that case it is very emergency conditions. If that ruptures if the cyst ruptures into the uh, intra abdominally then it is very it is very dangerous. Surgical treatment is a minimal access therapy or it is called the puncture aspiration injection and re aspiration again ok. That means, puncture aspiration of fluid injection and re aspiration. This is done after adequate bracted may and the droprasic quantile has also been used uh, available uh, according to the availability ok. So, radical total partial pericystectomy with omitoplasty and hepatic segmentectomy if the patient is a medical common surgery depends on the clinical groups it is effective it is the say anatomical position if those so this is the surgical option the total so radical total radical total or partial pericystectomy that means full cyst you must uh, put out you must take off the cyst from the liver that is radical surgery which is the radical surgery the total or partial pericystectomy with omentoplasty and hepatic segmentectomy. So, during the operations uh, cholecidal agents are also used such as hypertonic saline 15 uh, ethanol others. So, these are the hypertonic salines the 15 percent 20 percent ethanol 75 to 95 percent or 1 percent also some 10 percent solution. So, these sometimes asked in the exam to see which fluid is uh, used in case of hydrated cyst surgery that is that will be that must be high hypertonic solutions which consist of 10 to 15 percent ethanol 75 uh, so hypertonic saline 15 to 20 percent ethanol 75 to 95 percent and 1 percent povidone iodine 
sometimes use 10 percent solutions ok. So, you can say this liver treatment pair persistent endoplasty and hepatic segmentectomy may be done sometimes. So, laparoscopic marsupialization of the cyst that is de-roofing surgery de-roofing ok laparoscopic marsupialization of the cyst that is called the de-roofing surgery I have done uh, for one uh, de-roofing I have seen uh, be because my professor sometimes perform this uh, case it is not so frequent but sometimes we saw this kind of operations. So, cyst consists of endocyst along with the daughter cyst is more common procedures. Using povidone iodine and hypertonic saline as a considered agent if the cyst is small uh, superficial and the left lobe goes to periosystem performs central experience low enough. The lung is a second commonest organ affected. The cyst is usually single although multiple cysts do not do occur concomitant hydrated cyst in other organs and found incidentally. So, sometimes these cyst or cyst like features can be diagnosed accidentally with the, uh, with the diagnosis of other disease. So, erosions and bronchioles result the air being introduced between the pedicyst and laminated membrane gives the fine red lotion crescent and meniscus crescent sign which is regarded as a water lily sign of city. In case of city it is look like a water lily sign and a crescent sign present in the, uh, in the x ray ok chest radiography you can see this is a crescent uh, things there, there is double it is a cyst uh, into this is there is another one. So, this is the crescentic sign ok. So, here you can see the cyst cavity in the uh, lung you can see here also present the uh, water lily sign uh, the young uh, mountains mountains here I had a altitude and the combined shortened bed uh, here you can see a huge it is a stomach shadow a heart shadow maybe no it, it is a esophageal shadow ok sorry and this is uh, a fully water lily sign. So, pulmonary hydrogen disease that is second most common over, uh, organ involved size of cyst wide variations plain radiograph show meniscus or crescent sign a CT shows water lily sign. So, uh, ideal treatment surgical various choices available ok. Thank you very much uh, that is all about the tropical infection for first part then I will come with the second part uh, from the next day because uh, we, I must not I uh, lengthen in uh, length in the video because uh, a long video sometimes uh, awful or uh, it is not so much popular that is why I make the lectures or the topics of Bailey's and Labs between different parts. So, I hope you might you enjoyed my channel and enjoy my videos if you uh, enjoy my videos then like and comment below or if uh, you have any query. So, you can ask me in the WhatsApp or you can ask me in the um, uh, uh, Facebook also. So, thank you very much for watching and stay tuned because in the next day I am going to discuss about TB, leprosy and uh, polio and others of typhoid diseases and a, a, a lot of other things I, I will discuss. So, do not go anywhere just be listen to the lectures and write down your bellies and loves and, uh, and underlying the structures that, that I already done here ok. And just make these similar things. So, just read out the textbook and uh, the and you must watch down the these uh, underlying structures because these are very important for FCPS and MRCS exam. So, uh, sometimes the quest teachers took the question from the textbooks ok. So, uh, uh, nowadays exams are changing, exams are a bit tougher and the questions are so much practical or the clinical oriented. So, we must go through textbooks and we must not uh, read the other books is like other reference books because reference books are, uh, are, are it's not uh, ideal. So, and uh, there is a lot of wrong answers and there is a lack of information therefore, uh, any any PG exams 
so we, we must go through textbooks okay so thank you very much for uh, patience hearing and um, see you next time bye bye